isomerism in coordination compounds well isomerism in coordination compound is divided into two types structural isomerism and stereoisomerism structural isomerism is further divided into four types ionization isomerism hydride isomerism linkage isomerism and coordination isomerism while stereoisomerism is divided into two types geometrical isomerism and optical isomerism now we will learn four types of structural isomerism we know that isomers have same molecular formula but different structural formula now the first type of structural isomerism is ionization isomerism let consider this coordination compound now if i dissolve this coordination compound in water it will dissociate into positive ion plus sulfate ion now listen carefully we know that sulfate is a counter ion and bromine is a ligand now i interchange the ligand and counter ion i get a second coordination compound here bromine is acting as a counter ion and sulfate is acting as a ligand now i dissolve this coordination compound in water it dissociates into positive ion plus bromide ion we can see that these both compounds have same molecular formula but in water they give different ions i mean this coordination compound gives sulfate ion while this coordination compound gives bromide ion due to different ions we call these two compounds as ionization isomers so these two isomers are ionization isomers therefore we define ionization isomerism as the coordination compounds which give different ions in the solution are called ionization isomers let me repeat it the coordination compounds which give different ions in the solution are called ionization isomers the easy trick to learn ionization isomers is interchange counter ion to ligand and ligand to counter ion now consider this mcqs these two are dash isomers we can see that here chlorine is acting as a counter ion and bromine is acting as a ligand while in the second compound bromine is acting as a counter ion while chlorine is acting as a ligand they both have same molecular formula but in solution they will give different ions so they are ionization isomers hence note down this first type of structural isomerism now the second type of structural isomerism is hydride isomerism let consider these three coordination compounds we can see that they have same molecular formula but they have different structural formula i mean in the first coordination compound we can see that there are six water molecule present in coordination sphere and the second coordination compound we can see that there are five water molecule present in coordination sphere in the third coordination compound we can see that there are four water molecule present in coordination sphere so we say that they have different number of water molecules in coordination sphere such isomers are called hydrate isomers so these three isomers are known as hydrate isomers therefore we define hydrate isomerism as isomers arises due to difference in position of water molecules inside and outside the coordination sphere are called hydrate isomers let me repeat it isomer arises due to difference in position of water molecules inside and outside the coordination sphere are called hydrate isomers so this is the second type of structural isomerism 
Now we will learn the third type of structural isomerism which is linkage isomerism. Firstly, we will learn about ambient debt. We know that the ligand that can attack through two different sides are called ambient debt. For example, consider NO2. This ligand can attack from nitrogen side. If it attacks from nitrogen side, it is known as nitrate 2N. Secondly, this ligand can attack from oxygen side. If it attacks from oxygen side, it is known as nitrate 2O. Secondly, consider SCN. This ligand can attack from sulfur side. If this ligand attack from sulfur side, it is known as thiocyanate 2S. This ligand can also attack from nitrogen side. If it attacks from nitrogen side, it is known as thiocyanate 2N. Hence, note down this basic concept of ambient debt. Now consider these two coordination compounds. We can see that they have same molecular formula and same structural formula. But mode of ligands attachment is different. Let me repeat it. Mode of ligands attachment is different. I mean, in the first coordination compound, the donor atom is oxygen or nitrate to O. In the second coordination compound, the donor atom is nitrogen or nitrate to N. So such type of isomers are called linkage isomers. Similarly, consider these two coordination compounds. We can see that they have same molecular formula, same structural formula, but mode of ligands attachment is different. I mean, in the first coordination compound, the donor atom is sulfur or thiocyanate 2S. In the second coordination compound, the donor atom is N or thiocyanate 2N. So these two isomers are linkage isomers. Therefore, we define linkage isomerism as the coordination compounds in which the donor atom of the ligands are different are called linkage isomerism. Let me repeat it. The coordination compounds in which the donor atom of the ligands are different are called linkage isomerism. Hence, note it down this third type of structural isomerism. Now we will learn the final and fourth type of structural isomerism, which is coordination isomerism. The easy trick to learn coordination isomerism is that they always have two brackets. For example, consider this coordination compound. In the first coordination sphere, the metal atom is zinc. In the second coordination sphere, the metal atom is copper. Now I will switch the metal atoms between these two complex ions. Let me repeat it. I will switch the metal atoms between these two complex ions. I mean, I replace copper by zinc and I replace zinc by copper. I get copper NH3 whole 4 zinc Cl4. Now these two isomers are called coordination isomers. Secondly, consider this coordination compound and form its coordination isomers. Well, we can see that here the metal atom is iron, while here the metal atom is cobalt. I will just switch the metal ion between the two coordination spheres. I get cobalt NH3 whole 6, iron CN whole 6. Now these two isomers are called coordination isomers. Therefore, we define coordination isomerism as isomers formed by switching the metal atoms between the two complex ions are called coordination isomers. Let me repeat it. Isomers formed by switching the metals between the two complex ions are called coordination isomers. Thus note it down these four types of structural isomerism. Now we will learn the two types of stereoisomerism. 
Remember that stereoisomerism have same molecular formula, same structural formula, but different spatial arrangement. The first type of stereoisomerism is geometrical isomerism. We know that in geometrical isomerism, we write two forms, cis form and trans form. When same ligands are adjacent to one another, it is called as cis form. When same ligands are opposite to one another, it is called as trans form. For example, consider this coordination compound. Now I write here platinum. There are two ligands of chlorine. I write here chlorine and chlorine. There are two ligands of NH3. I write here NH3, NH3. Now listen carefully. We can see that same ligands like chlorine are adjacent to one another. Also, same ligands like NH3 are adjacent to one another. So we call it cis form. Now I write here platinum. I write here chlorine. Now I write the second chlorine opposite to the first chlorine. Secondly, I write here NH3. Opposite to this NH3, I write here NH3. We can see that same ligands like chlorine or NH3 are opposite to one another. So it is a trans form. Thus these two isomers are known as geometrical isomerism. Secondly, consider this coordination compound. I write here cobalt. I write here NH3, NH3, NH3 and NH3. I write here chlorine and chlorine. We can see that same ligands like NH3 are adjacent to one another. So it is a cis form. Now I write here cobalt. I write here NH3, NH3. Opposite to these two NH3, I write here NH3, NH3. I write here chlorine. Opposite to this chlorine, I write here chlorine. We can see that same ligands like chlorine are opposite to one another. So it is a trans form. Therefore, we define geometrical isomerism as coordination compounds that contain the same type of atoms and bonds but have different spatial arrangement of atoms are called geometrical isomerism. Let me repeat it. Coordination compounds that contain the same type of atoms and bonds have different spatial arrangement of atoms are called geometrical isomerism. Hence note it down this important type of isomerism. Finally, let me teach you optical isomerism. Remember that optical isomers have same molecular formula, same structural formula, but they have different behaviors towards light. Optical isomerism is possible in coordination compounds if they are optically active and they have non-superimposable image. I always teach these two important conditions for optical isomerism and coordination compounds. The first one is optical activity. For example, consider this light source. We know that bulb produces light in all direction. Such type of light is known as unpolarized light. Now I place Nicole prism in front of this light. The Nicole prism will transfer the unpolarized light to polarized light. Let me repeat it. The Nicole prism will transfer unpolarized light to polarized light. Now I take polarimeter. I put solution of coordination compound in it. If the polarimeter rotate the light in clockwise direction, are in right side, we say that this compound is dextrorotatory and we represent it by positive sign. If the polarimeter rotate this compound in anti-clockwise direction or in left direction, we say that it is leorotatory and we represent it by negative sign. Remember that in these both cases, we say that compound is optically active. The third possibility is that 
The polarimeter doesn't rotate the light in clockwise or in anti-clockwise direction. So we say that this compound is optically inactive and no optical isomers will form. Thus remember that optical isomerism is possible in compounds that are optically active. While optical isomerism is not possible in compounds that are optically inactive. Hence note it down this basic concept of optical activity. The second condition is non-superimposable image. For example, consider this object. Now I place mirror in front of it. Firstly, I write here M. Now we can see that B is nearer to the mirror. I write here B. We can see that A is away from the mirror. I write here A. So this is the object and this is its image. Now I take the object and I place it here. Secondly, I take the image of this object and I place it here. We can see that object and its mirror image are different. Let me repeat it. We can see that object and its mirror image are different. So we say that they are non-superimposable. Remember that if object and its mirror image are different or they are non-superimposable image, we call it, they are also called enantiomers. So this object and its mirror image is also known as enantiomers. Now consider this coordination compound. I write here platinum. I write bromine, pyridine, chlorine, iodine, NH3, NO2. Now I place mirror in front of this image. Firstly, I write here platinum. Now bromine is present in up position. I write here bromine as it is. Iodine is present at bottom position. I write iodine as it is. Now we can see that NO2 is nearer to the mirror. I write here NO2. NH3 is nearer to the mirror. I write here NH3. Pyridine is away from the mirror. I write here pyridine. Chlorine is away from the mirror. I write here chlorine. Let this is dextro or positive. Then it is levo and negative. We know that this is object and it is its image. So they both are in enantiomers because they are non-superimposable image. So optical isomerism is possible in this coordination compound. If you want to learn my personal trick to find geometrical isomerism and optical isomerism in coordination compounds, watch my lecture and its link is given in the description.